Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is the tutorial about tangents. So when I first joined Pixar in 2002 to work on The Incredibles, um, all people working on a film were free to attend dailies, which were a series of reviews where various departments showed their work uh, to the director and got comments. So I learned many important things uh, from those dailies, but perhaps the most important lesson I learned about was tangents. People were constantly calling them out and saying, hey, there's a tangent there that needs to get fixed. And I was sitting there and I was kind of like, what on earth is a tangent? I never heard of it before. So that might be the question you're asking too. What is a tangent? And that's what this tutorial is about. I'll explain what tangents are and how to go about fixing them. So quite simply, a tangent is an area where two objects in an image are nearly touching or actually touching. And in doing so, it creates a visual mistake that the human eye doesn't like. So sometimes this is also referred to as objects kissing. So it can lead to confusion in the viewer, like for example, it can draw the eye to a part of the painting that you don't want to draw the eye. It can just look plain wrong or strange, um, or it could also confuse the viewer as to the depth of the different objects inside of your scene. And that's why these things are best avoided. So the good news is that most tangents can be easily fixed. Uh, you just need to identify them first and then move one or more of the objects or make an object less contrasty compared to the other object in order to avoid the tangent. So for most of the upcoming examples, I'm going to be using this painting that I did for the book The Story of Ink. So all the painted or 3D elements in the painting were done on separate layers. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'll be adjusting elements in the painting to create tangents so you can see what I mean, and then I'll show you various solutions to the problems. So if you do a search for tangents on Google, you'll find uh, uh, many lists of different types of tangents with different names, but here are the ones that uh, I tend to find the most often. So this is the most common type of tangent, which is the object that's touching another object. So you can see here we have Ink the robot and Landis the human, and the two of them are standing very near each other, but his cape is just touching Ink's hand here. And that creates a, a, a tangent, uh, which looks a little bit strange. So a couple different ways of fixing it. Of course, the obvious one is uh, move Landis away a little bit so there's space between the two. That's what I did for the final painting. Or another way of doing it is you could move Landis closer in so he's overlapping the hand more and then that gets rid of, rid of the tangent there. But if you notice by doing that, I created a brand new tangent, which is uh, the head and Ink's arm here are, are touching each other. So if you're going to overlap, you got to make sure that when you overlap, you don't create a new tangent by overlapping. And um, in order to avoid that, I moved him over to the left a little more so that he is no longer, there's no longer a tangent here and there's no longer a tangent there. Next comes the object is touching the edge of the frame, which is pretty similar to the last one, except instead of touching an object to an object, it's the object to the frame. So for example, let's say that I cropped the painting like this. So this is bothersome because you'll notice that the top here of this building touches the edge of the frame, and that looks weird and wrong. So again, uh, the solution is either to move the building, or in this case, I actually increased the amount of space between the building top and the top of the frame, and then that solves this one. Next comes an object in the foreground is touching an object in the background. So this is similar to the last again, where you have two objects touching, but in this case, where we had Ink and Landis who are on the same uh, depth, um, standing at the same depth, touching each other, now we have Landis whose head is touching something that's far, far in the, in the distance. So not only does this create a tangent because of how uh, close they are together, which is bothersome, but it also extra confuses the viewer because the viewer is like, uh, so is he on the same, is he at the same depth as the building? In which case is like Landis really big? Is the, the building really small? And it causes a lot of confusion. So fixing it, we can of course move the building or Landis to uh, break them apart. Or in the final painting, what I did was I added some fog back there. And the fog not only solved the problem of the harsh line, um, but it also uh, properly seated the object in the background. So now there's no question uh, what um, depth the different objects are in the scene. Next is a foreground object is touching a background object in a straight line. So in this example, you'll notice that uh, we have a long straight line in the building back here at the edge of the building. And then you have a long straight line, which is the back of the weapon on Ink's back. And so what you've created is you created this long line that goes all the way from the bottom to the top, but half of the line is in the foreground and half of the line is in the background. And that causes some, some visual distress. 
So obviously with that one, easiest way is to move the objects so that you can have your straight line here and your straight line there and the two of them are not lined up either vertically or horizontally. Next is two unrelated objects shared the same horizontal or vertical line. So let's say I wanted to add a bird to this painting for scale. Um, so you'll notice that uh, the bird is directly above Landis' head. There's a direct vertical line going between these two unrelated objects. And uh, not only does that create a tangent that we want to avoid, but um, it also looks like, you know, the bird is going to do his business on Landis' head. So we definitely don't want that. So easiest solution is to move the bird so that the bird is not directly above Landis' head. And you'll notice I also mo moved it over so that it's not directly above the staff either, because that would j just create a, another vertical tangent that needed to be fixed. So next we have cut down the middle. So for this one, we're going to use a different uh, image from the ink book project. And let's say that our focal point is ink, and we want him centered, and so we crop the image like this. So that's fine for the robot, but it's not fine for Landis, because you'll notice his face is cut in half. And not only is this a tangent, but as well as being a tangent, it's a particularly nasty one, because as humans, we don't like the ideas of faces being cut in half, because we imagine that it's happening to us. So it's like a, a deformity, or somebody's been, been killed. So in order to fix that, I pull out the image so there's more space. And now um, Ink the Robot, while he's not centered, he's still the focal point because he's much larger and he's also got a brighter color on him. Um, but now Ink, uh, Landis's face is not sliced and uh, that makes it look a lot better. Except you'll note that in doing so, I accidentally left this tangent there, which is Landis's hand against the edge of the frame, which uh, is also not good. So I pulled it out a little tiny bit more, and there you go. Now we don't have any tangents going on here. Except, while I was preparing this project, I noticed that there was actually a uh, one last tangent that was in the final painting that actually ended up in the book. And I, I decided to show this to you because I wanted to show you, um, first of all, that you know even professionals make mistakes, and we leave tangents in by accident. So don't feel bad if you have paintings that have tangents, uh, because it's going to happen. Um, although the one thing I will say is this particular one is not as evident because usually the eye is going to be looking up here around the faces of the characters. The, the eye of the viewer is not going to be looking down there, so it's not an egregious one. But it's still one, and I wanted to make sure that uh, you guys saw it so that you don't feel bad when you uh, forget to uh, you know, have a couple tangents in your own paintings that you never saw. So uh, the last one is an animated tangent, and this is any of the tangents above, but it's part of an animation. And the thing to remember is, um, if you still pause a single frame from an animation, there may be a tangent, but the very next frame, the tangent might be gone because the objects are moving. So instead of looking at any specific frame of the animation, uh, you instead only need to really worry about tangents that hold on frame long enough to be noticed. So don't nitpick each individual frame. Uh, watch the stuff at speed, the same speed the audience would be watching the, the animation, and fix any tangents you see in that context. So the last section isn't a tangent type, uh, but it's talking about using tangents on purpose. So one of the reasons tangents are best avoided is because it, they draw the eye, and that becomes a focal point, and you don't want to draw the eye to a mistake. But there are instances where you can use tangents in order to draw the eye um, for a purpose. So the most famous example would be the Sistine Chapel, painted by Michelangelo. So you have the painting of God reaching out to touch Adam, and uh, those fingers, as you can see, create a major tangent right there. Um, but it draws the eye to the most important part of the painting, which is God giving Adam life. And so in this case, uh, this is using a, a tangent for good and not evil. Now, a less serious example, one of my favorite films is The Blues Brothers, and there's a scene where Murphy Dunn is talking outside of Bob's country bunker, and directly behind him is a neon hat that's moving from side to side on the sign. So this obviously violates the two unrelated objects share the same horizontal or vertical line rule that I mentioned before, which had the bird. But it's done intentionally because it's funny. I mean, it's funny to see that hat uh, moving on top of his head. And so it was done on purpose, and it uh, helps out the, the whole point, which is to make people laugh. And lastly, here's artist John Baldessari using tangents as part of a conceptual art piece. So you can see the trees coming out of the man's head, and that's obviously wrong in a tangent, uh, but that's the point of the art piece. They're showing you something wrong, and then including the word wrong at the bottom of the painting. So in conclusion, tangents are generally something that are best to be avoided. So do your best, give a check to any piece of your work you've made before you finish it off to make sure you don't have any tangents, 
And don't be too hard on yourself if you let one or two slip in by accident. So that's it. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, if you want to see more art lessons, both video and text, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section. And if you want to be notified the next time I update uh, my YouTube channel with a new video, uh, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much.